Good morning, Keller Williams. How are you? Jeremy Champagne, your operating partner. I'm here with agent extraordinaire and ALC member, Stephanie Williams. Stephanie, you want to say good morning? Hey, how's it going? All right. So, hey, today we're going to talk about foundational models for real estate. So, Stephanie, I can imagine that with where you are right now, you're running a good foundational model for your business that everything's built on, correct? Yes. Okay. So, one of the hallucinations that I have, and you tell me if I'm wrong, right, is that we could have a sizable amount of agents in our environment who don't have a foundational model that they act on every day. Yes. I think that might be true. Yes. Okay. So, today true. you're going to help me answer some questions about what a good foundational model could look like okay. that we could help other agents. How's okay. that sound? Sounds like a plan. Okay. Awesome. So to me, it, it feels like if you're not running a foundational model that you could be forced to go find an assignment and you don't really know what that is and you don't right. know how to research. So where are you going to start? Right. And maybe that could be a challenge when you're looking at our training calendar of our market center, our yeah. regional training calendar, certainly our national training calendar. Yeah. And you're like, where does all this fit right. into what I'm doing? <laughs> right. Okay. So right. I'm going to try to make some sense of that for everybody today. Okay. So, Hey, we were talking before about numbers yes. okay? and business is a language of numbers. Yes. And I want to talk about your foundational model. Okay. Yeah. So we talked before about three lines of income. Yep. First line of income would be a monthly income that pays the bills. Yep. Second line would be a line of income where you're living a very comfortable life you've always dreamed of. Yep. That third line of income would be the line of income that we learn about as business entrepreneurs yes. and how to raise capital and be able to, to become an investor in things that would return money to us. Yes. Would it be, which one would you like to use in order to talk about what, what your model looks like? Uh, looking at what my model looks like, I would definitely say, uh, I, let's go for the gusto. So we have okay. to go for it. <laughs> let's bring it down to the monthly level. Here's, right. what, here's what I'm looking for. After you've paid Uncle Sam, right. okay, what are you distributing out of Stephen Williams real estate right. to you for you and your family to use to live that third level? How much per month are you hoping that that is? Right. So typically, if we're talking number three, then we're talking about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars is where we are there. Could I use the high end? On yep. That? Use okay. high end. All right. Yep. So if we're doing twenty thousand, all right, yes. let's monetize that out to make it an annual number now. Yes. Okay. So let's do the math on that. And I'm just going to make sure I do it right for the video and the people that I'm watching. Okay. So that is $240,000 yes, annual. Okay. Yes, now let's talk about adding Uncle Sam back in. Yeah. What I would do is divide that by 0.7 okay. average tax bracket for most people in that spot, which means that you should be distributing as a whole to you a very specific number, 342857 right. Okay, right. That's going to give you enough money out of the business to pay for your yes. family's income tax. Yes, and okay. we, we're talking three. Exactly. <laughs> so we're okay. talking number three. There's one last component, though. We right. know in the model that you're going to be spending X amount of money to make money right. in your business, right? right? Now, for an individual agent, that's usually 30%. Yep. However, for somebody like you running an operation that's a team, that could be as high as 50%, yep. right? So if we took that number, right and did one last calculation to factor in cost of yep. sale and expenses let's see what that is now we've arrived at this yep. big old number so that would be your gross commission income there we GCI go GCI right there <laughs> hope everybody's following along if yeah. not you can go back and hit stop watch the whole <laughs> thing again right and have fun with doing the math so again we started with a monthly income annualized it, yep. came up with a number, added taxes back in, came up with this number, added cost of sale and expenses to run his real estate business, and this is the gross commission income we need to make. All right, let's jump to number two. Right. Let's talk about how much you, you would have to sell as yep. an organization to make this occur. So now we're going to get into business numbers. We call that lore, language yep. of real estate, right? Okay, so what do you think your average commission rate is? I would say right now, well, last we checked, it was around 247, I want to say. Okay. So we're around 247, 247. So that's average sales price, right? Yep, average sales price. Okay, so yep. that's 247. I'll yep, put so we'll take 247 here. and then we'll say so tell me the average commission 275. Rate. So multiply that times 0.275. So 247 times 0.275. So you're doing, so this is the average sales price, yep. right? Just tell me what you think the average commission rate is that you get per unit. Oh, uh, rate. I would yeah. say 0.275. Yeah. Okay, so yes. we're going to divide the 685 yep. GCI number by 0.0275, yep. right? 
So let's see what we get here. Kind of jump, jump the head, huh? <laughs> so we're looking at right at yep. 25 yep. million in closed sales volume. Yep. Okay. Now you said your average sales price is 247. I like how he knows his numbers down <laughs> to the thousand. Okay. So let's divide that by 247,000. And we're looking at 101 units. Yep. There we go. At that price gives this much volume at that rate gives that. Okay. Now, for anybody who's looking at these numbers going, okay, just dial it back. I'm yeah. going to quote Kevin Phillips, just dial it back yeah. to whatever you need it to be to make sense to the yeah. number that you started with. Okay. Everything's based off of what that number is that you need in monthly income. Okay. So is everybody clear on what his economic model looks like? Okay. In the four models of MREA, this, this set of numbers here in lore is the economic model that directly supports the life by design that Stefan's looking for. Yep. Are we on track? Yep, we're on track. Okay. Now, the biggest thing that most people probably would raise their hand and say, Stefan, <laughs> surely you're not just getting that from one source of lead right. generation, right? Right. So can you talk for a moment about how many lead generation strategies you currently employ? Maybe, maybe you don't have to name them, yeah. but how many things do you think you're actively running right now that's bringing you business? No, definitely. That's, that's a really good question. So I would say uh, we always try to keep at least three pillars of business. So our okay. top three would definitely be referrals, which is repeat business okay. and, and folks that are referring. So people that already know, love and trust us, they are referring or are personally doing business. And then our next pillar would definitely be um, lead. So we do have a lead source, uh, mm -hmm. online lead source. And then our very last one is open houses, to be honest. Um, right. Open houses have been very, very effective for, uh, from an agent standpoint. Okay, so we have three strategies here that are working well, and those are probably the places, if you had to add up how much of your business is coming from these three sources, yeah. it would be what? It would be over probably 85 to 90% for okay. sure. So we're talking 80-20 rule here, yep. right? So 80% comes from your top three yep. strategies, that means you're running other strategies in yes. the background that could give you some growth yep. above what you've done in the past. Yes, okay. definitely. So would you say in the environment we're getting ready to roll into that we not <laughs> only have to increase what we're already doing, but maybe we got to go wider? Yeah. So does that mean you need to add strategies yes. in yes. this environment? Yes, definitely. And definitely. is that something that's part of your growth plan? Yeah. So okay. right now we, we try to at least add in something per quarter just uh -huh. to see how it's working. Actually, online leads was one that we added in January and we okay. decided to keep. Okay. So uh, we, we do a good job of measuring success and seeing what's happening. One of the other ones that we've brought back now are Facebook and Instagram leads, which are a lot less than uh, regular online leads. So okay. we're kind of me measuring that now to see kind of what's happening with it. Okay, yep. so so hang on for a second. I'm, I'm I have I have this you know I have so many people tell me they just want to go master one thing at a right. time, right? What would you tell them to anybody who just wants to do one lead gen system at a time and that's it? Yeah, I think I think it. Uh, I would tell them to focus more on the longevity of doing it. So how long they're doing it and measuring how long they're doing it and what they're doing while they measure. So okay. what that would mean to me is if I'm picking up three or four things, it's one thing to just do one, but you have to think about if that one thing doesn't work for three months, now you're starting at ground level zero. Absolutely. So I would say if you pick up three, three things, just measure them and see exactly how much you're doing it it, how consistent you can be, and then look at the results at the end of a three to four month period, and then see which ones you want to keep, and then explore and see what you like. Love that. Love yeah. that. So if I walked up to you right now and said, whatever you have in the market or any any discretionary income you have, right. give me all of it. I'll go put it on one stock in the New York Stock Exchange. Your answer to me would be <laughs> no. no. It's real succinct, right? Yeah. It's real away from me, right? Yeah. Okay, so I hope that everybody gets my drift yeah. on that, that we yeah. shouldn't put all of our eggs in no, one, one basket, basket. No. okay, for that purpose. Hey, tell me about the ideal work week for you, yeah. how you count under yourself and more importantly how do you stick to it and yeah. not let yourself deviate yeah it, that that's probably one of the toughest tasks I, I think to master to be honest and uh i think how, how i've done it is pretty much time blocking okay. uh don't have a military background but it, everybody tells me that they feel like i do so i think time blocking has been the, the biggest uh shift for what me is time blocking? yep time blocking to me looks like every single increment of the day so we're talking 30 minute periods hour periods i know what i'm doing at that time mm -hmm. to kind of hold myself accountable. Okay. So if, for example, uh, at, at eight o'clock,
o'clock when we get in from 8 to 8 10 i know we're looking at numbers we're looking at interest rates we're looking at what happened in the market how many new homes hit the market those type of things to stay abreast on what's happening mm -hmm. at 8 20 something else is going on which is our daily huddle mm -hmm. and on so on so 9 30 we start on social media just to kind of you know let people know that we're agents and we're still in the business and working to help people and okay. so on lead gen lead follow-up all the way up until 12 30 and then everything else is time blocked but it's wider so it's more so showings and actually servicing the clients okay. but in the morning we're in front of them looking for new business and new people that we can have real estate conversations with with the goal of at least 20 people that we have real estate conversations with today okay so let me let me transition as it pertains to the calendar over yes. something that i know about since you and i have had a business relationship now for a couple <laughs> of years um how do you time block for your growth plan and, no. and going to get education and going to get better. How do you insert that? Yeah. Do you leave empty space yeah. for that on a daily basis? Or what does that look like for you? No, so for me, once again, every, everything kind of has a space. So uh, I really feel like, I know we're introducing something new with a GPS, but I really feel like it's about knowing what you want to learn, right? Okay. So I think if we go back to lead gen strategies and we look at the three or four pillars that you may be trying out, mm -hmm. I think it's important to look and see how the calendar, once it's released, fits into all those activities activities and then schedule it out on your calendar so that you're not just moving around without actually having a target in mind. And you got that right the first time? Yeah. Nah, no. <laughs> no, indeed, no. <laughs> is, is that an ever-evolving thing? It's always, it's always. Okay. It's, as okay. Gary says, it was counterbalance. So yeah. it's always like, you know, you're up here and you're down here and you're just balancing over and over. So, okay. but I think definitely just starting off is very important. It was very important to me to know what I'm going to matters and make it count. Okay. Yep. So what would you say to folks who are really struggling here and, and where do you think their primary hang up is? Uh, I think a lot of it is uh, the quadrants, right? So you always have your quadrants where you look at the things that you just have to do, right? And you have to do them and they're time sensitive. And then you also look at the things where they have to be done, but you don't have to do them and so on. You know, so you have those four quadrants. I'm sure everybody's familiar with them, but there I think it's planning out the day. And I think that's why I struggled the most was not knowing when I started my day, when I finished it, how do I know it's successful? Got it. And the only way you know that is if you write down, here are the things I have to do to have a successful day. Because to answer your question, a lot of people, I believe, get caught up on all the easy things. And before you know it, they've had a long day, but they haven't had a productive day. So they're not doing the revenue generating activities. They're not doing the 20%. <laughs> they're they're doing the 80%. <laughs> so, so, we're, so we're calling it the 80-20 rule from a time perspective, yeah. calendar blocking perspective. Okay, last item. Accountability. Big, love it. Okay, so um, I know that you go to several different uh, people yeah. for accountability, professionally, personally, yeah. health-wise, yeah. whatever the case may be. Um, what what does accountability do for you that affects everything on this? Whew, I think we're, we're, you can do all this right, right, and not have accountability. You can have all the knowledge in the world, know what to do, and just not have anybody in your life that pushes you, or that could not be a person, but it could be a thing. So I feel like for, for me, like you said, I do talk to a lot of people and get accountability, but I really feel like what makes it so pivotal is the goal. You know, I, it's, it's this saying I always say, if your why is big enough, your how doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like that pushes accountability. My okay. why pushes the accountability. So if we don't have this you clearly cannot established, do it. You would, cannot do would you it. avoid accountability? Yep. Okay. You definitely would. So, and just, just so that we're talking the same language, in the Keller Williams model, there's three different levels of GCI yeah. that determines the accountability you should be looking for yep. based on where you are in your real estate practice or business. So starting out from time zero right. to making right around 75,000, 75, you're looking at red stick career development and options in the market center. You would like your business to primarily be, if I understand this correctly, yep. prospecting based and yep. marketing enhanced. Yep. Okay. So that's, that's step one. Step two goes from that 75, 75. To 150. up to 150. Yep. Who are we looking for here as yep. accountability? So right in that place, we're we're talking to a team leader yep. at that point. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're talking team leader or your OP. Yep. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. 
happy to help. And also there's like, <laughs> hey, many peers in the top yeah. 20%, yeah. right? Yeah, so a whole lot of 20%. You have, you have your board of directors in-house <laughs> and out-of-house, so people yeah. that are in this range, by the way, yeah. that are looking to get to where you're thinking and where you're operating? Yeah, okay. definitely, definitely right. working towards it. Okay. And then we get into the last stage. Well, 50 gonna, and up. I'm just going to say 150 plus. Yep. Who should people be looking for here? Yep, they should be in. Uh, they should be in mastery coaching at okay. that point. Maps coaching. So mega agent productivity. Okay. Maps coaching. Okay. And does that mean you jettison all the other accountability partners when you get there? No. Okay. No. Right. No. Why is that? Because I think everybody plays their effective role. I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer of you can never be too big to learn. Mm -hmm. So I think that each each piece plays a part, to be honest. I mean, uh, what you learn here may be different than here. And at times, your business shifts Got and it. you need different things. So I would I would expect zero to 75, you're probably talking about way more lead gen strategies at that point. Mm -hmm. 75 to 150 is probably more accountability and mm -hmm. 150 is probably more of expansion and more of different ideas to add into it, it. and probably a little bit more money spend. So at times right now, right, we're talking more about lead gen. We're in a shift. Yeah. So that coach could be very, very effective. You know, Kevin and Larry would be phenomenal to, to speak with because they've been in the business and it's a shift and we want to talk more about lead gen. Okay. Right, so everybody offers their different benefits. Okay, so give me a synopsis here quickly as you can that, that talks about how this foundation <laughs> would be if without it, yeah. how do you operate a real estate practice without this? Yeah, I think I think it's very tough. And I, a lot of people, we call it faking it until you make it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can go really, really far on talent, but you have to implement the strategies in there at some point. And uh, a lot of people, we're talking 80, 20, 80% of people, I believe, are not running these models, which is why they're, they're kind of seeing the fluctuating business up and down month mm -hmm. to month. Absolutely. So I would say it would look like someone just kind of wandering around and every now and again you, you hit really good stuff mm -hmm. and then every now and again you hit really bad stuff and you never can really have control of that boat to know where you're going not a whole lot of predictability to that not at all okay. got it well guys i hope this helped with uh thinking about what your foundational model looks like you've heard it from one of our experts here is in the top 10 of our market center stephan thank you so much for no your problem time at all. all right no problem at all. all right okay. see you next all time right. guys all right